year with a standout performance in Woody Allen's latest film, Blue Jasmine, and performing to sold out crowds at the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas. The Dice Man, Compass. Give it up for my friend, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> say when you touch him and you just heal him what do you do you know what it is so i don't want to get him too <laughs> <laughs> so i just touch the hand yeah, yeah. Okay. just a touch <laughs> yes we can smoke in here can we yeah they smoke everything else on the stage have a seat my friend I was hoping next time I saw you, you would be Andrew Dice Clay Oscar nominee. Uh, well, I told you, though. I, I told you. You know yeah. what I mean? If, maybe if the part was a little big, I, I really appreciate uh, how journalists felt. I really appreciate how the people felt. So, you know, just to be in this movie was great. So, yeah. you know, yeah. and I'm thrilled for Kate Blanchett, won the Golden Globe. Hope she wins the Academy. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Sally Hawkins, amazing. Good movie, man. And based on Woody Allen numbers, this is like top three box office. Uh, you know, he had the base, man. <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop it. Here, here. I got it. I got it. Put it in there. I got it. it. I, I promise I won't drink it. Uh, no, I mean, you probably had something to do with the success of the movie. You know, I don't take any credit. I mean, Woody is he's a brilliant director, writer, producer. I'm just glad I was in it, honestly. Hey, on the set, did you ever do an impression of him for him? Because back in the day, see, when I first would go to the comedy store as a young comic and watch this guy work, we knew him as an impressionist. And uh, it wasn't the big Dice Man boom yet, and he was brilliant. But one of the impressions he did was Woody Allen. He used to close with Jerry Lewis, and in the middle there was an array of Italians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did a couple. I don't do a million impressions, but I did do, uh, you know, Travolta and Stallone and, and Al Pacino, guys like that. And, uh, and, but so you I, did Woody Allen, didn't you, uh, back in the day? Not, not till I met him. Oh. Yeah, I mean, when I met him and he goes, oh, we, we're doing a little movie and um, <laughs> we, would you read a little bit, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, then comes Jerry Lewis, you know, from the Nutty Professor, he's like, well, actually, I was just thinking, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, you know, uh, you know, and then, uh, it's really been a while since I've done these, um, uh, all right, so here's like John Travolta talking to Sly Stallone. Okay. Everybody remember Saturday Night Fever? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. See, that's the funny thing about when you do an impression, you turn around and you think the guy is coming out, but it's the same guy. <laughs> it, it's silly, but I do it anyway. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sly, I can't, I can't believe we're in New York City. I can't believe that. <laughs> hey, yo, you know, I don't know why they think it's so new. <laughs> That's all, I can't do no more. Now, I, man, I just, just want to turn it on. Do no more. Robin <laughs> DiMaggio, I can't do no more. Al Pacino from Injustice for All. <laughs> I'm dying over here. <laughs> it's funny, once I get you going though, because we love doing what we do. The great, the great late Sammy Davis Jr., okay? <laughs> Why can't I find my eye? I forgot the punchline of that one. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my. Why am I pointing down there? Uh, hey, there's an Entourage movie coming out. Are you going to be in it? Uh, I'll probably be in a little of that movie, yeah. Okay. I think so. I think so. They, they got it? You know, it's a, it, you know, it's an exciting time for me. Just like when I came on, you know, I'm talking to uh, John Singleton about a project he's working on with HBO with Russell Simmons. And, you know, I've been... You, 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 know, you going to play a black man? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. But, yeah, well, I'm talking to him with that. He's working on that. Uh, writing the book, which is driving me insane. You know, there's even Why? some stories about... you. Know, because, you know, they put so much pressure on you to finish quickly. Yeah. And so I'm trying to, like, really tell my story. You can't get everything in there, but that there's stuff about you. No, uh, no, yeah. no, no, because... Oh, no, I got a great one about you. I don't know if the... Stuff some from the comedy store, I hope. Well, it was late night. Ah! Ah! And, uh... Drunk somewhere. No, yeah, well, what happened was, me and you, I won't say the name, we hung out with this woman in her place, in her apartment, and that was the moment, see, when you wound up getting a talk show, yeah. that was the moment I realized you should have one, because I'm sitting in the apartment, and all I want to do is <laughs> <laughs> And you got into a whole, like, three-hour heavy conversation. I'm just smoking cigarettes going, in my mind, I'm going, just leave. I just want to this chick, you know? And, and, and then you did, and I did. <laughs> and, yeah. and she was the one who used to book the clubs, right? Well, well, she wound up making me a headliner yeah. in, a, in a club in Texas. Yes. So I was glad I hung out that night. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to get paid. Wait, yeah, wait, wait. You were in it. You were like <laughs> interviewing uh, with Ken State. You were talking all kinds. <laughs> and I'm going, just leave. It's four in the morning. <laughs> you, you introduced me to it. Now get the f*** out, you know. We'll be right back with more days. Hold on, man. Hold it. Hold it. The Hard Rock Vinyl at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Vegas. Come see me. And you do one, one show a night? Yeah, it's one show a night. I always looked at Vegas as just big-time show business, and when I went in there like 20-something years ago, they didn't have rock bands. No, but everybody thought it was unhip. Right. And I was doing like 20,000 seats a night, and, you know, that year, it was like 1990, me and Billy Joel, were the biggest concert performers in the world. Today, I see bands, you know, everybody, from Britney to Madonna to every big act in the world plays Vegas today. And, you know, I take a little credit for that. <laughs> That's funny. A little bit. Last time you were here, it was interesting because you got up and you went out there and you did material, and it was material that I was able to air unedited. When you said to me, do material, mm -hmm. I, I was going through like the file in my head going, okay, what can I do that I won't be banned for life off this show now? <laughs> you know, but believe me, if you see me live, it, it's pretty, it's pretty hardcore. Still pretty hardcore. It's pretty hardcore because that's what the world is. Yeah. You know, when you talk about how the world is spun, how aggressive women are today, you know, like, you know, you know, today they don't wear jewelry in their heads. Everything's down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They'd be dazzled. Yeah. I mean, yeah. a girl could take off her jeans during the recession and come up a wealthy guy. <laughs> you know, you know, that, you know, but Dimaggio over there egging you on. How long have you known him? He, he actually gave your son his first, first drum set. Many years ago, when Max was 10, Dimaggio and I, we became good friends, like 25 years ago, Robin? Yeah, well, we produced and a record together. To me, Robin Dimaggio is hands down the funkiest most exciting drummer i've ever watched and, and, and i mean that and you know i mean that you did, you all knew that dice was a drummer right because well, I, I used to play a little i used I to play a little i didn't a little i walked in the main room one time there's only two times at the comedy store main room when i saw something bizarre i walked in once and andy kaufman was wrestling <laughs> right 
and I walked in another time and you were in the center of the stage with a drum set. And oh, I, I, would, I would practice like during the day because I always loved the drums but you know then it, my comedy evolved and yeah I don't do it that much anymore. Yeah. You know. You can, you, they want to hear it. <laughs> You know, Ro Robin, who's the best, Dice or his son, Max? I hate to say it, but your son is better than you are, son. You know, he really is. Yeah. You agree? Really, you've met Max. Yeah, you know. but I haven't seen him drunk. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, he's like 11 years old there. Wow. How old is he now? He's 23 now. I wonder if Max possibly... B? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> you are Dice's baby boy. You are out of your mind. Dice's really baby boy. Good. Hey, by the way, I have a I copy of Blue Jasmine for everybody here. What you do to me? You wrecked me. See, I thought I thought Dice was gonna say he was the best, but he didn't. So let's have Max bust his ass anyway. A little drum off. Oh, All right, Arsenio, oh, you're gonna pay for this. Once upon a time, there was a boy 